What's up guys, welcome to Free Dive Passion. I'm sure most of you are stuck at home in quarantine because of this whole coronavirus uh, fiasco. Here in Dahab, things aren't too bad. We have a few regulations and limitations in place. We have a curfew at eight o'clock. Blue hole is closed, which is a big bummer, but we're still able to dive in the, in the bay area of the lighthouse. Before all the flights got canceled, I already had a few people here who, were, who I was coaching. Obviously, a lot of people had to drop out, but until now I've been busy um, teaching for the last month straight, or even just over a month. But now all my teaching dried up as of yesterday, and the universe has gave me some extra time to train. <laughs> so that's exactly what I intend to do. It was always my plan this year to fit in more training than, one, than what I have done in the previous you know, four years. So I'd scheduled that anyway around my coaching. It just so happens this corona thing has gave me a, an undefined extra amount of time to, to do my training. I've got some pretty nice objectives. I want to reach 100 meters in, in free immersion and in constant weight. So this is set up to be like a pretty important year for me. And right now is my first day that I can start training and getting used to my constant weight monofin diving. I haven't touched the monofin in about nine months. So it's time for us two to become reacquainted and become friends again. Now 100 meters is a pretty lofty goal. It kind of, it's sort of a benchmark within free diving. It's, it's sort of a big deal. So you might think that my training might resemble some type of rocky montage. But one of the most important lessons that I've learned over the year, years, and something that I continuously have to relearn, and I'm continuously surprised by this, is that a dive, doesn't have to feel hard. There's no specific depth, which is inherently challenging for everybody. Now, you can feel challenged and you can feel out of your comfort zone if you try to do a specific depth, which you're not mentally prepared for or even physically prepared for. But this isn't a fixed thing. And I know everybody out there who's trained free diving even a little bit has experienced these shifts in perception for what is deep, for what is hard, for what is easy. So the question is, how do we change this perception? How do we make the dive feel easy, no matter what the depth is? One thing that I've noticed at my level now is that the thing that affects my dive, the feeling of the dive, how hypoxic I am at the end of the dive, how much CO2 I feel, where I get contractions, the thing that affects these things the most is my attitude towards the dive. Do I feel super confident? Am I enjoying the dive? Am I aware and present for the whole dive? If I am, the dive will feel amazing. If I'm not, then the dive can, can go start to go very wrong. Now I'm starting to go deeper and deeper. So my CO2 tolerance, my O2 tolerance, my lactic tolerance, strength, adaptation, all these things are gonna be the same from one dive to another. The only thing that's changing is what's happening in my mind. And perhaps I'm having some slight lapses in concentration or I haven't put the necessary things in place in order to notice when I'm starting to do things wrong and starting to stress out more than what I should do. So this needs to be my main area of focus, not Rocky montage style training, but teaching myself to stay calm, focused, relaxed, and perform in the optimum way, no matter what's going on in the external environment. Now obviously, CO2 tolerance, O2 tolerance, strength, flexibility, adaptation, all these things matter. But what I'm saying is if you let your mental game slip, then things can go wrong very quickly. I believe it's very important for us to acknowledge that if you're a competitive freediver or if you train in the style of a competitive freediver, 
increasing your depth, going, getting new PBs, going past your PBs, that we're putting ourselves in an extreme situation. It's an extremely hostile environment to be 80, 90, 100 meters away from the surface with no chance of taking a breath. And we have to understand that it would be extremely possible, if not likely, that there's some sort of survival mechanism which will kick in, whether it's on a conscious or an unconscious level. And for us, that survival mechanism is the sympathetic nervous system. It's an, a, re a release of adrenaline. It's the fight or flight response. Okay, this isn't the optimal re um, reaction for us to have at that depth, but it's something that's built into us subconsciously. And it's something that is very hard to overcome. To not accept this possibility and not have some systems in place to stop this from happening, you're just fooling yourself and you're setting yourself up for a big mistake. Now, this shift into fight or flight, it's very hard to notice. I mean, if you think back to situations where you've been scared or angry or in some sort of emergency situation, how often have you stopped in the moment and thought, oh, I've had a slight change of consciousness. My perception of reality is a little bit different than it was before this situation. No, that doesn't normally happen for normal people because you're caught up in the moment. The same thing can happen in a dive. There's this switch into fight or flight survival mode and because you're in it, you're in that moment, plus we already feel a little bit weird at depth, so it's hard to notice these slight subtle changes in consciousness. You just don't notice and you'll surface and you wouldn't have realized that you were even in this fight or flight mode. Now, does it have to happen? No, there are plenty of professionals, especially the type of professional that still has to perform under a highly stressful situation who have developed tactics in order to maintain calm and optimum performance in these high stress environments. I do this in my diving by incorporating periodical checks on myself during the dives. I do this by incorporating cues into the different parts of my dive, which cue me to take a look at myself and make sure I'm performing in the way that I should be. I then reinforce these cues using visualization so these cues are all the way into my subconscious and it's happening without me having to consciously think about it. It's important to understand that these checks are only useful if I'm intimately aware with exactly how I should be feeling in the moments that I check myself. So for instance, when we're talking about monofin swimming, I need to know exactly how it feels when I'm feeling optimally. So am I using more power than I need? Am I only using the muscles that I need? Am I streamlined the way that I should be? All these thing, things need to be drilled into my subconscious. So when I do check, I know exactly if I'm performing right or if I'm doing all those things right, but maybe using 10% more power than what I need to use in order to get myself back to the surface. All these things need to be drilled into me and I, I need to be able to notice them in any moment that I choose to. To develop this awareness with the monofin or any of the disciplines takes kilometers of work. Not necessarily hard work, as in like what you would do in a dynamic ta CO2 table or something like that. No, it takes kilometers of focused work, paying attention on the movement, learning how to move optimally for your body, and just drilling that into your psyche. Once this work is done, you have something concrete to check against during your dive. So when you're cued to pay attention to how you're finning, you'll notice if you're using too much power, you'll notice if you're finning suboptimally. Now the, the key is to make sure that you do incorporate these checks into your dives. Between check-ins, it's possible for the awareness to shift. You could be blissing out on the movement of the water over the skin, or just really enjoying the technique of finning through the water. See, this is where the hard work that you put in by drilling the technique starts to pay off. So for now, my focus while in the water is developing this soft mastery of the monofin. Equalization, CO2 tolerance, O2 tolerance, strength, flexibility, these can, be all, these can all be trained separately. 
to combine them at this moment is not optimal. That's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed watching some of my training and listening to my insights. I'm going to be releasing regular vlogs following my training until I reach the 100 meters, which is my goal. Whether it takes a month, whether it takes 10 months or two years or 10 years, I'm definitely going to get there and you're welcome to join me on the journey. Until next time, guys, take it easy and dive safe.